pyom, 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 pyom. Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woki, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. Today, as the name of the video implies, I'm going to talk to you about whether or not you should be summoning on the summer units because Castoria is really close by. <laughs> so I was a little bit, um, I was busy, is busy the right word? I don't know what I was doing yesterday. Um, I was relaxing, that's what I was doing because I actually had a day off of work. So I wasn't able to release the video when I wanted, but I still want to talk about it. Castoria is coming up real quick. Let me see if I can... I think it's like literally just a month away at this point. Anniversaries is like in a month. So, um... With that said, the thing I didn't expect them to do, because literally every other year, if you actually look at what uh, the Fago NA timeline is like, they usually save summer for after anniversary. So we actually have it before. So now, usually my advice would be like, hey, wait for anniversary, see what you get, no real big deal. But now that anniversary is a little bit, <laughs> things have changed today, it's going to be a lot tougher. Because let me tell you, summer is usually the banner most people want to summon on. Not because the units are, units are usually pretty okay. But mainly because the units are summer units. And yeah, yeah, so... Let's talk about it. And this one specifically is like, yeah, yeah, I kind of forgot. Okay, so let's talk about it. First of all, we'll go with part one, which is uh, Miyamoto Masashi, uh, Berserker, Osaka Bihime, or Hime, as I'm going to be calling her from here, point on, Archer, and Carmilla Ryder. Uh, of these, obviously, Musashi is the most known for it because she's a five. She's a five Berserker. She's got some fantastic outfits here, as we can look at real quick. Some great stuff that I hope doesn't get me demonetized on YouTube. Her active skills are Excel Turn B, grants self evasion for one attack, increases on crit damage for one turn. Uh, fifth serving is her skill, second skill, double the number of hits when the normal attack with arts cards for one turn, increase on damage when normal attacks with arts cards for one turn, increases on MP generation rate for three turns, MP rate is 50%, and damage is 30%. And third skill is Tenma Gugan, ignores invincibility for three turns, increases on attack for three turns, grants self buff status for one time three turns, deals 5,000 damage without killing self, and reduces all enemies defenses for three turns. Not bad. Passive skills are Madness Enhancement, increases on buster performance by 12%, Magic Resistance C, increases on debuff resistance by 15%, Writing D, <laughs> increases on quick performance by 4%, Divinity D increases own damage to by 125. Very nice of them to make an arts unit because she has two arts units, one quick, two buster, and an arts NP. Nice of them to not give her a buff to arts whatsoever and instead give her a buff to buster and quick. And now that her pen skills are actually out, let's talk about them. Her pen skills are extra attack finesse improvement, increases own extra attack performance. Mana loading starts battle with MP gauge up to 20%. Third skill increases on uh, critical attack chance resistance uh, against Lancer enemies. So there you go, and up to 30% at level 10. And her noble phantasm is, I was told there would be a magic sword busting. Da four hits, damage to all enemies, reduces their critical attack chance by 30%, chance to seal all saber enemies NP for one turn. All very nice, um, very nice stuff, very nice berserker arts um, unit. And actually, funny enough, with Castoria on the way, one of the better Castoria units um, to actually go with her. Because the reason is is that she has built-in NP gen, and she's actually arts, and she's a berserker. So that makes her, at, out of, I think only one class really has a chance of not stopping her. But really, <laughs> that one class isn't usually used for farming. So she's fantastic for farming. She has the berserker side of her. Not only that, she's also just great to look at. I have her. I was able to get her last year, so I'm happy to have her. A lot of people are going to be wanting her, either because they want to run her with Castoria or because, yeah, reasons. You can just look at her. Growth curve is super big. Anyway, uh, worth summoning? I would say, yeah, oh man, this one's tough. For the most part, as someone like me, as I always say, you should always summon for your favorite unit. And if you really love Musashi... Which, uh, which is understandable, giving a lot of... Actually, depending on the kind of person you are, either you hate Musashi or you absolutely love Musashi. I personally really like her. So it was kind of a no-brainer to summon for her, especially since I don't have the arts version. And I actually plan to go for Castoria myself. So that was kind of why I was able to do some summons on her. Um, 
I would say it's kind of worth summoning, but you probably don't want to go too crazy because if you don't get Castori and you end up with just Musashi, and you don't have Tomomo, then all you have is a very, very nice looking bikini lady. So, always summon at your own cost, and as always, if this one of your favorite units is on a banner, I say go for God and go for it. Fugo is a game about having your favorite units fighting with you, and if your favorite unit is currently on a banner, you should always prioritize them over anything meta-defining. As for the other two units on her banner, uh, Sagabahime and Carmilla, I think they're both perfectly fine. I'm <laughs> The four stars for me, unless there's a big standout, I usually just look at the art. She has some great arts. Who doesn't like that? Look at her. Absolutely adorable. Worth, worth owning, I'd say. Uh, stage one. Everyone's favorite Phantom Knight. Great stuff here. Two dogs. Who doesn't love that? Um... Also quick, quick writer. I think she's also an AoE. I don't actually know if she's any good for that though. I should test it now that I actually summoned for her and got her. I did two tickets. <laughs> I'm also saving for the Okita, but I was gonna do ten, but I ended up getting her in two tickets, so I'm just gonna save the other eight tickets for her. Summoning campaign two, we have Merlin, Siegfried, and Fuma. Siegfried and Fuma are not worth actually going for or chasing unless you absolutely love them. Fuma, uh, he's my boy, but he's a three star. You should have five of him. Siegfried, you will accidentally get the MP5 pretty easily in this game unless you absolutely want him, in which case he's impossible for you to get. And Merlin is in the current state of NA, still very good, still fantastic on defense. There's no denying that the man has some of the greatest D game in the entire world, D standing for defense. Um, able to withstand a whole bunch while also healing is super clutch in a lot of cases. In terms of being a the Buster unit, the unit that Buster needs, he is not that. Because at this point, quick and pretty soon Arts will be replacing it. And unless you'd like a big challenge, you aren't really going to be using Buster. The reason is that he only gives 20% on this. It's funny enough, a lot of people, especially on the JP side of the game, want Merlin buff. I think they're crazy. I think he's still very good at what he does, which is defense. I don't think they'll ever give him 50% NP because at that point he'd be kind of crazy busted because <laughs> he gives so much crit damage. But the but in two years time, there's going to be a uh, another buster, two more buster units, one that can be used with Merlin and one who actively wants to avoid Merlin at all costs. So something to think about for sure in the future. But if you like Merlin, this is your best chance of getting him. But though, though funny enough, Merlin is in constant rate up. So you might actually you might actually be good just kind of waiting until to see if you're going to be going for Castoria. But if you're someone who badly wants to reunite Merlin with <laughs> with Castoria, even though I think most of Castoria's story... Actually, I need to... I'm not 100% sure on that. Most of the fan art I've seen of Castoria makes it seem like she hates Merlin. But you know how fan art is. Usually it's a little bit uh, flunky <laughs> in, in cases of that. So let me go... I have to actually go... Funny enough, I have to actually go back here because I don't have the part 3 banner. On part three, which should be, I'll just look at it right here. There it is. Here we go. Artoria Pendragon Ruler, Mysterious Alter Ego, uh, Lamba, and Okita J. Soji. Uh, this is the five star Artoria Pendragon. She has Royal Bunny, grant, uh, charges her own MP gauge, grants self evasion for one turn, grants self Royal Bunny jump, delayed buff for one time. Royal Bunny jump, increases on attack for one turn, after one turn, for one turn after one turn. I said that right. Her second skill is the Royal Card C+, randomly deals five new command codes, and then event and increases party crit damage for three turns, 50%, but then eventually it gets an upgrade where it's Royal Card B+, the selected allies command cards will not appear for one time, one turn. Kind of activate if you only have one party left remaining. Randomly deals five new command cards. This will reset the deck so it becomes a first turn of new command card cycles. Increases party crit damage for three turns. Increases party MB generation for one turn. Good skill. Really good skill. Um, I always liked it when it was like this because it was very interesting the way it did it. This just made it better and it's, it went from six turns to five turns. Third skill, the Knight of Lion B increases on attack for three turns, increases on crit store absorption for one turn, 40%, absorption 600%, six turns. Her passives are Magic Resistance B and Territory Creation B, increases on arts performance by 8%. She only has one arts, so not the greatest. Debuff resistance is always nice though. Her append skills are extra attack performance, 20% MP gauge, and increase on attack against saber enemies. 
and her rank is A+, uh, 4 hits, busts her, and deals damage that uh, ignores defensive buffs for all enemies, charges on MP gauge by 20%. At level 1 it's 300%, at level 5 it's 500%. Increases on art performance for 1 turn, arts and quicks as well. Uh, quick arts buster, 20%, so pretty nice. The main thing that's kind of the takeaway here, which is funny enough, the reason that she's kind of good, is that she can actually loop, but not with Merlin on NA. She can only really loop with, let me go here, I didn't have this prepared in advance. This is a unit you're gonna be waiting two years time for, but I've already made mention of her once. Wow, what, was I in the wrong one? And was she not alter ego? Oh, I thought she was. Oh, that's right, she's not, she's an assassin. She's assassin, that's gonna make it much more annoying this summon for her. Uh, assassin. And the reason is this skill here. Charges on NP uh, allies gauge reduces their skill cooldowns by two. That would make it effectively she would be able to get back, okay, be able to get this back in time for her to use it again, which would be very good. So, yeah, it should be enough time. Because this would be for, I forget how the turn, you'd have to use it turn one. So your chances are would use it with something else to give a buff, use it. And then she also has this. I think you would be able to make it in time. This skill, for sure, you'd be able to make it in time. So because, yeah, cool down by two, so that'd be four. That would mean two turns if you did it on turn one. It'd be, yeah, 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 yeah. There's a way to make it work. <laughs> There's a way in my head I'm like, yeah, that works. Um, you just have to make sure. Because sometimes, you, uh, yeah, I'm always, I'm always in the mindset of like, well, it doesn't make sense because I have a max unlimit broken kaleidoscope, but not a lot of people do. And to be fair, with uh, the append skills and some other stuff, you don't need the full 100% uh, uh, now. You can have a little bit of leeway if you invest into some other stuff in there. But either way, she should be able to loop with her in there, no real issue. Uh, that go also with the 20%, so she's very nice for that. She is a ruler, so she doesn't have, uh, she has the kind of problems of, she's not really type effective against most, but she's not really type negative against most either. And then the one class that she is, there's never a farming node attached to it, so you're fine. Speaking of farming, uh, Lamba over here, I think that's how you pronounce her name, Lamba, Leviathan, Lancer, Lamba, yeah, it's something like, Lamba, something like that anyway. This unit, I'll just make a mention, some great art, Penguin. AKA Leviathan, uh, Melt, fantastic. Great April Fool's costume right here in the costume sprite. Yeah, who wouldn't want this unit? But funny enough, she's actually great with Castoria. <laughs> she's really good, probably one of the better um, uh, loopers, and I think it's because of this skill, this skill right here, <laughs> where she just takes the MP gauge from everyone else. Uh, which is pretty good, which is pretty funny. So she's good for that. Uh, fantastic unit. And then in terms of, I think might might be the my think might be in the running for one of the. Actually, let me be sure because I think they actually buffed her. Uh, she's like one of the very few summer units. No, she didn't get buffed at all. Not you know. Am I crazy? I could have swore they buffed her. Anyway, she's probably one of the worst uh, summer units. That's not fair. She's one of the most uh, weirdly designed summer units, and the reason is is that she has a chance of um, stunning herself, a 60% chance of stunning herself, which act, which would actively kill any chance of you have with looping with her. Um, I think there's command codes that you can use to make it so she doesn't really fall victim to that that much. But this is basically killer. I think she's actually fine at looping without that. Um, she's like super strong and stuff like that. But the main thing is, is a 60% chance of stunning yourself really kills anything that you would have with her in that stage. And if you're in a challenge quest, a 60% chance to stun yourself is, is giving yourself a demerit for no reason. So you kind of have to work around her if you actually want to use her. So that's why I'll say not bad. More like interestingly designed <laughs> to be anti. It makes sense, I guess, lore wise. But it's a real pain in the ass to just use. Perfectly usable though. And is also the ultimate beam of Akita with a swimsuit. So understandable why you would want her. So yeah, those are the units coming up with here. As always, I think it's kind of worth... Of these units, if I if you were to put a gun to my head and say like, is it worth summoning? I would say no. 
no, don't do it. Save for Cat Story if that's really what you want to ask for what is good for the future of the game. It's better to just wait for Castoria, see if you get her, and then plan from there accordingly. Uh, it's bad to summon beforehand. It's different when there's a year's difference. A year ago, it would have made the most sense to summon for these units. Not only that, I should also mention, if you really want to get real about it, the summer unit that comes after Castoria is the perfect person to go with Castoria, which is Summer Kiara. And she's fucking nuts, broken, insane. Oh my god, this is the greatest art slooper in the entire game, at least at the time of her release. I don't know how it is now. Um, crazy bonkers good. And <laughs> if you are looking, so you don't have to worry about like, but I don't have anyone to go with my Castoria then. Well, don't worry, because literally Summer comes up and it's like, boom, here's the perfect unit to go with her. And in terms of four stars, there's also Tamo, Tamo, Tamoy, protect me, Tamoy. Yeah, Tamoy is there as well. So in theory, you don't really need to summon. So I would say summon only if you super care about a lot of these units. I'm not listening to my own advice. I'm stupid, so I still summoned for Carmilla with two tickets, and I plan to go eight more for Okita because she's the only one I'm missing, and I really like Okita, even though I just literally mentioned all the bad aspects about her kit in potentially... Not even her kit. It's more like just a 60% stun is a bummer. It doesn't matter to me. I'm still going to summon with the eight tickets I have and wish me the best of luck on that one. But yeah... Those are the units. Good luck to you if you do end up summoning, and good luck to you if you are saving, because it must not be easy. <laughs> you had you would have to actively hate most of the units here, especially because there's a lot of good dudes. Merlin is a loved. Siegfried is really liked. Fuma, I like Fuma, even though he's a three star, so you should already have MP5 Fuma. A lot of these others are either well liked or they're niche enough that they would be super well loved by the people who would want them. Obviously, Melt is super loved. Artoria is literally one of the is the poster girl okita's okita so yeah that's the end of the video everyone i hope it helped if it did you feel free to leave a like comment down below tell me if you have any specific plans uh, in your head and your noggins as we prepare closer and closer to the castoria release and i will see you guys next time you know what i should do because i am going to put up the summer outfits on here i may as well just put castoria over the, the boob part because it really is an issue <laughs> youtube will take down your thumbnail if you put up too much boob Sad state of affairs, but that's it, everyone. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.